Good morning, Faith family. Uh, it's a special Sunday here. We're a few days after Earth Day, and so we've kind of created a special service in that it's um, Creation Care Sunday today. And so we have one of our, our chair of our Creation Care Committee. Uh, his name is Will Morris. He's an environmental missionary. Um, you may have seen some of the workshops he's been doing, but he'll be joining us later today, as well as our, our pastors for a, a panel discussion for our word. Um, but before we uh, dive into worship, hear these centering words. God has been made known to us. Christ is here, ready to be revealed. Watch and wait for the new growth that is coming. You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord most Jesus, you brought heaven 
Hi, my name is Key. I'm associate pastor, and I'm here to lead us in the call to worship and opening prayer. Uh, for those of you who don't know what this is about, this we do kind of an, a, a way to to go ahead and just uh, prepare ourselves for this time of worship. And so, when you see on the screen L, that's my part, and then when you see on the screen P, that's your part. So, uh, go ahead and join me now in the call to worship. Abide in Christ, and Christ will abide in you. Listen for people, and God will speak. Seek the Spirit, and the Spirit will be revealed. For the Spirit is already here, inviting us to stay. Let us pray. Creator God, we are here, yearning to know you more fully. Stay with us as we worship this day. Reveal yourself in the words that are spoken and the songs that are sung. Help us understand your truth and embrace your life-giving power revealed within your enduring word and the natural world. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Now we have a time where we're going to invite Daryl Mark to go ahead and give us our children's message. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us this Sunday for today's children's message. This week I was so lucky to spend a day with Princess Leia Angry Bird, and I'm so excited and I can't wait to see all the fun we'll have today. Let's go see what she's up to. Princess Leia Angry Bird, is that you? You look more like Princess Leia Couch Potato. What are you up to? Hey, Daryl. I was just watching a movie they made about me. A movie about you? Wow, she looks just like you. Well, do you know what today is? Uh, Taco Tuesday? No, silly. It's Earth Day. And I thought maybe we can go outside and enjoy the beautiful day together. What do you think? That sounds like a great idea. Let's go. Wow, Princess Leia Angry Bird, today was so much fun. Thank you for spending Earth Day with me. Today's scripture reading comes from Psalms 24.1, and it says, The earth is the Lord's, and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. God created the earth and left it to us. As we celebrate Earth Day, let's continue to do our part to protect it and keep the earth healthy. I hope we can celebrate every day as Earth Day. Princess Leia Angerbird, can you close us in prayer today? Sure, Daryl. I would love to. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the earth. Thank you for the plants, the trees, the animals. I pray that we continue to protect the earth that you left to us. And I pray that we continue to be your light in the world. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. To all the children, the youth, uh, this week we challenge you guys to create a sign to celebrate Earth Day. Uh, a poster or a, a piece of paper uh, with a drawing or uh, just something that helps you celebrate what Earth Day means to you. Here are some examples of youth that have sent them in already. And we can't wait to see uh, what you create and what you guys send to us. Uh, feel free to send them to me, Reverend Allison or Pastor Key, and we would love to share them all with you. Hi, my name is William, and I'm here today to talk about my climate testimony. So, um, growing up in church, I had always cared about you know, the environment and the earth, but I never heard a single sermon on caring for God's creation. Um, and so I knew that it was something important to do, but never you know, heard it from the, the church as a whole. And that continued um, all the way into college where I studied environmental science. And I ended up being one of the few Christians in my science classes and one of the few people at church with a science major. So it always um, felt very split for me, like it was two different worlds. Um, 
And this never really came together until after I had finished up college. I uh, went to this mission school our church put on, and I heard someone who was an environmental missionary speak. And this was the first time someone really connected the dots for me um, in caring for God's creation and having it be a part of our faith. So that really intrigued me, and I ended up um, traveling uh, to Kenya to work with a Christian conservation organization, Orosha, and being there, um, getting that cross-cultural experience, being with Christians who cared for God's earth, and doing scientific research as a part of my faith um, really excited me. And so I, I came back home and I told people about it um, at church, and they were confused. They said, wait, Christians care for the environment and do things like that. And so I realized there was a, a big need um, here where I live to talk about creation care as a Christian in churches. And so that has um, driven me and guided me now to being an environmental missionary, going into churches and talking about creation care in the environment, and also being a field organizer, trying to get a hub um, of Christians together who are focused on climate action. So um, yeah, the, I think the testimony for me really has been just this learning experience, tying it into my faith, and then um, being outwardly focused with it. So that was just a, sh a short um, version of it, and we'll provide a link for my full climate testimony, along with um, some other young people like me. Hear now the word from the book of Psalm, chapter 19, verses 1 to 6, from the Common English Bible. Heaven is declaring God's glory. The sky is proclaiming his handiwork. One day gushes the news to the next, and one night informs another what needs to be known. Of course, there's no speech and no words. Their voices can't be heard, but their sound extend through the world. Their words reach the ends of the earth, and God has made a tent in heaven for the sun. The sun is like the groom coming out of his honeymoon suite. Like a warrior, it thrills at running its course. It rises in one end of the sky. Its circuit is complete at the other. Nothing escapes its heat. The word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. We should pick up our mics. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Um, so this is a special Sunday in that we are uh, the Sunday after Earth Day, and so because of that, we're going to talk about creation care. And if you don't know, we have a committee here at this church called the Creation Care Committee, and part of our mission is to raise awareness. And so I hope that through this, this time that you're able to know a little bit more about what it means to care for God's nature, to care for this world, and to be a part of a, uh, in many ways, a movement. And so we've been on a journey through here, uh, here at Faith. And so um, a lot of this movement was actually initiated by Will. He's a young adult here. Um, many of you may not know him, but he's an environmental missionary. So I'd actually like to give Will a chance to introduce himself, just kind of things that he's been a part of and uh, just what he's been doing. Yeah, so what have you been doing, Will? <laughs> yes, thank you for the introduction, Eric. Uh, as he said, my name is William. I chair the Creation Care Committee here at Faith. Um, I'm also an environmental missionary with the Evangelical Alliance Mission and a field organizer to Southern California with Young Evangelicals for Climate Action. So my work focuses on tying together faith and climate action. Wow, that's quite the resume that you're building <laughs> there. Yeah. You're keeping busy, and we've gotten to know Will over the past few years. Um, but we thought that this would be an interesting opportunity to kind of invent something new. And so we have a panel here, actually. We have our environmental, local environmental missionary, William Morris. And then we, of course, have Pastor Key and Reverend Allison as our panel. And I'll be our... Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> I am the host. Um, so they're, they're in charge of talking. I'm just in charge of making sure that they're on point. <laughs> Um, but it's an opportunity for you to just listen into discussion. Um, that's, it's not really anything, we don't have a script in front of us. We're, we've just been prompted with a few questions for them to think about. So I hope that you enjoy it, um, but just listen to the discussion as we go along. So our first question is, what does the term creation care mean to you? And why don't you start us off, Pastor Key? 
Well, uh, that's a good question. You know, creation care, uh, it always comes back to, you know, one of my favorite passages is, is coming out of Genesis. And, and it really just means caring for the things God created, whether it's our brothers and sisters, uh, uh, the, all the you know, parts of nature. Uh, when I think about the ocean, the mountains, uh, just the environment around us, uh, all the living creatures, it's about doing our best to make sure that the thing that doesn't really belong to us, which is this earth, it was given to us to manage and to care for. Uh, how well are we doing that? And how well, how, how well am I doing that? So creation care overall means what, is, what, is it, what does it mean for me to kind of care for uh, the things God has given us in terms of his creation? Thank you, Pastor mm -hmm. Keith. How about you, Reverend Allison? What does the term creation care mean to you? When I hear the term creation care, I think about, I go all the way back to the book of Genesis, right? And where we think that God created everything. And so that's not only us humans, but it's also the animals, the forest, the trees, the oceans, the sky. And I think about how we as human beings have not been good stewards of that and taking care of it. And so our, our goal when we use the term creation care is that we are tasked once again to continue to take care of all of God's creation. And so, um, and I see how it really ties in with our faith, but it also ties in with our human duties mm -hmm. as stewards that God has tasked us to take care of. And, and we are the ones that are creating a lot of the problems. Mm -hmm. And so how are we as humans trying to fix those problems too? Yeah. All right, Well. Yeah, for me, it's, it's also very similar. It's about the fact that God created everything and he has asked us to take care of it and to ensure that it's flourishing. Um, and that, that is one of the big mandates he has for us as Christians, as followers of Christ. And, um, you know, God did not have to create creation. It's not necessary to him, but he wanted it. Um, and I think for us to take care of it, to steward it well, that, that's an act of worship. That is an act of respect and reverence. Um, and that is, that is a way we can show God that we, we love him and we can return it um, by doing that. Wow, Will's, Will's answer is a lot more pastoral than ours is. <laughs> it always is. I but I do have to say, if I want to go back to that question, as, and, and I, as I'm hearing all of you share, part of it is I think the biggest part of Christian care is how are we caring for each other, Man. you know, in our relationships. And I think when we care for the things God gave us, the first place to look is how am I, how am I caring for you, Will? How am I caring for you, uh, Reverend Allison? How am I caring for you, Eric? And I think when we're able to kind of address this question in that term, then all the other things kind of sort of come into play. And that's, for me, I feel like it's a, it's a more uh, effective and productive way to approach that question a little bit. And for me, it feels more, more relational and personal too. And it feels like I can actually think more about God's care in that way, mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's, <clears throat> hearing Will talk, uh, if you've been to some of his workshop or anything like that, he talks about how um, the changing mm -hmm. environment it affects the least of these in the mm. in our poorest places around the globe <clears throat> and but we don't really see the effects of that um, and that directly opposes our mandate to love one another right, right. Mm -hmm. but as you can see it, it this is an important subject for all of us here and as church leaders we have our two pastors here um, we have will who's a environmental missionary yet the overall church the larger church in the united states they haven't been doing a good job. In fact, they're often seen as the antagonists to caring for God's earth, yet we've placed it within our faith development that it's an important thing. And so why do you think that the, the overall church in the United States especially is or has been doing such a bad job? We should give this one to Will. He has a really good answer. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot that goes into it, and I'll, I'll take it all the way back to the year 312 when Constantine uh, made Christianity. Oh, oh, way back. Yeah, <laughs> made Christianity the official religion of the Roman Empire, and um, until that point, Christianity was a religion that was on the margins, and it was helping people who were oppressed and vulnerable mm. on the margins of society mm. who were being oppressed by uh, empire. And now all of a sudden Christianity has become empire and has become dominant and mm. kind of absorbed those characteristics. Mm. Um, and so it moves forward into the end of the 15th century with the doctrine of discovery saying that any land that is not inhabited by Christians um, is free game and can be taken over um, and conquered and colonized basically. Mm. And so that drove um, the colonization of the so-called new world and you know, the, the genocide of indigenous peoples here and it drove our manifest destiny 
um, that they called it trying to trying to make it seem like it was God ordained, mm. and and tying our ex, that exploitive, oppressive, imperial values to our religion and kind of twisting it and using it, and so that that is the the history that the church here in America is built on is is this one of these capitalistic values of oppressing and extracting and putting profit and power first. Mm -hmm. And so all of that ties into mistreating not only people, but mistreating the environment and mm -hmm. trying to get as much out of it as we can, as quickly as we can, and kind of disregarding what's happening um, to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, just going back to what you're saying, I think overall for me, uh, what, you know, what makes it hard for the churches uh, in addressing this issue is I think education. You know, just as Will said, whether you go back to history and how it started and how we're doing, I, I don't think it's bad people. Uh, it's, it's, it's more overall just us not understanding what we do and how that affects uh, those around us at the end of the day, whether it's back in the 300s or, or even today's time. I think it's, it has more to do with just not being educated and not knowing how it affects. It's just like any other issue. You know, it's like this, it's like this pandemic. You know, it's, it's like the folks who are not... Uh, taking this seriously is probably because they haven't had someone who's been close to them affected in a serious way. Mm. And, and one of the things that I always say is like, everyone is wired differently. They're, they're wired differently, so they hear things differently, they interpret it differently, and they, and they understand it differently. So I think at the end of the day, how, we're, how we take that education on uh, can, can actually probably help an answer that question a little bit better. But yeah, mm -hmm. overall. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good uh, a reason. And, um, but another thing I think what we do, we tend to do as human beings as, as organizations, we tend to compartmentalize things. Mm -hmm. So we compartmentalize, we have children's ministries and youth ministries and young adult ministries and Christian ed and worship and all these other things. When I actually think all of the creation care should always be integrated into everything, mm -hmm. right? And how are, how are we integrating what we know into all of these, fusing them into all of these areas, but we don't do a great job because we're like, oh, well, we need somebody to hire for this position and this mm -hmm. position. And, and I think if we are doing something like what Will's doing is, he sees creation care as important. That's a passion of his, but he also understands his faith. Mm -hmm. And so he's living his right. faith by understanding Amen. what creation care is. And we as churches, we tend to separate. And we do that evangelically and Pentecostally, or we do it conservatively mm -hmm. or progressively. We tend to say we, we're different from you because we don't mm -hmm. do these things, or we mm -hmm. do do these things. And um, if we all started to think about things as integrated and integrate them into the way we live, I think our faith would actually show a better way of caring for creation if we were to, to think about it that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I've always, I guess the, the angle that I've always kind of approached it from has been theological too, mm -hmm. is um, that the church, sometimes when we read the Bible, it says things like there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. Mm -hmm. So why do we even have to care for this earth, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yet, I don't think that's what the Bible's saying, but people could interpret that in a way where it's just like, well, it's, it's not that important, right? Mm -hmm. If we're just going to, there's, there's Earth 2.0, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't know what you guys think about. Well, that's a kind of a scary thought when you think of it that way, right? I mean, that's probably what, I mean, that's probably one of the, one of the ways in which, you know, we got here is, yeah. is because we don't care about this because there's something new coming, you know? Uh, well, and, I'm not going to live long enough, so it's not right. going to affect me. Yeah. It's, it's a very selfish right. way of thinking about right. how I can make an impact. Totally. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a me thinking, but in the wrong direction. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's a question and something that people bring up a lot, talking in churches or talking to Christians mm -hmm. about it, is, well, everything's going to be burned up and destroyed, and there'll be a replacement, basically. So this one doesn't matter. But that's not really true. Um, when you look at the verse that's, that's saying that, um, in the Greek, it's not talking about a new world, a new heaven, new earth. It's talking about a transformed one. And mm -hmm. so in the Bible, when it's talking about um, Jesus, like there's going to be a restoration of all things and he's mm -hmm. going to redeem all of creation. It's, it's going to go back to his original vision um, in the Garden of Eden where we're living in harmony together with the earth and he's there among us. And so that, yeah, it kind of gets um, taken out of context as, as does happen a lot, I think. Yeah, I, I love the word transformation because I think that's where we're all at as far as discipleship is concerned too. Is, is as human beings, we consume, we consume, we consume, and it could be anything, you know, but because of all that, because we're consuming so much that we destroy things all around us, that we do need God's transformational pieces in our lives and in our hearts, you know. And so when we talk about worlds, even worlds are defined differently, right? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, when God created the world, he created with his breath, you know, and it's just words. And sometimes we say, you know, sticks and stones, 
you know, may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's so untrue. And there's something about what we say and what we create out of what we say mm -hmm. that creates these worlds too. And part of that is, is going, you know, using words like transformation and finding out what that means in, the, in terms of God's kingdom and, and, and God's discipleship for all of us, right? And so I love that term. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Yeah. And I think too that that transformation has to not only be internal, but external through yeah. our works. And I think Absolutely. that is something else that the church hasn't entirely gotten right is it focuses on being overly spiritual mm -hmm. and it's not focusing on the works part of faith. And mm. I mean, it talks in James that uh, faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. And so how, how do people know that we are Christian if we're not showing the outward manifestation of that through the works that we're doing? And mm -hmm. so Jesus came to earth in a physical body. Like obviously this earth matters to him. Um, and so just that, that needs to be, I think, also a big reminder for us is that we, we need to focus on the spiritual, of course, but we also need to focus on the physical. Mm -hmm. And how do, we, how do we faithfully steward the earth by putting those two together? Right, right. It's both and. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of kind of theological banter and the physical nature of things, uh, in seminary we learn uh, these two, two ideas of revelation that that in revelation is how we can know about god and on there's there's two one is uh what's called special revelation that we can know about god through uh, the word and so that could mean two things right scripture and then jesus christ right that the word was made flesh um that's special revelation but there's this other idea that's uh kind of placed out there which is called general revelation which is that we could know that a god exists so if we kind of take a bunch of steps back we can know that there is a god that exists because of the natural world mm. and the way that we're able to experience that. And that is our topic for today, is that we are able to know that God exists just because nature exists. Mm. And so our verse for today comes from Psalm 19, and it is widely considered to be um, general revelation that God created the heavens and that we could look up at the heavens, that it, it speaks of God's glory, mm. right? And so I'm wondering if, if you guys have been in a place that is special to you or your family uh, in, in the natural world that has said, you know, like God is in this place, right? Without having, having been prompted to that, like if um, you're praying or anything like that, just being prompted by just the space that you're in. And so, so what, yeah, what special place has uh, helped you find God's presence in nature? I guess for me, more than a place, I mean, there's always places. I mean, living in LA, uh, here in Torrance, luckily we're, we're closer to the beach, we're closer to the ocean, but sometimes living in LA, growing up in LA, you feel like you have to go pretty far. You have to drive somewhere to feel that nature. But for me, more than a place, it's a time. And I feel like something about early in the morning, yeah. you know, and, and, and in the backyard we have just the grass, some, some grass area. And then, you know, those little, uh, those, those yellow flowers in the morning, they just pop up and then by the time it's like four or five o'clock they're just done they're they're done you know sure. and there's something about waking up in the morning knowing that they're gonna pop up again mm -hmm. and and i'm just like wow god is alive like god is alive and sometimes it brings me to tears to know that i can i can wake up in the morning i grab my coffee and i just see that and i just stand it i stand in the backyard and just watching just how things are just growing on a daily basis you know and that film for me feels like I just feel so much closer to God in that way through nature, you know? Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think for me personally, I mean, there's definitely a lot of different places. Um, I think I felt it when I was in college, um, in Northern California, just among the redwood forests after class, mm. just being able to go and have that solitude in time with God. Yeah. Um, but I think the, the one time that I really, really felt it was, um, in Kenya, I was uh, volunteering with a Christian conservation organization, um, and it was along the beach there, and I just remember I got up uh, in the middle of the night, I walked outside, um, and I could just hear the waves and the trees um, <laughs> rustling in, in the wind, and you could see more stars than I've ever seen in my life, and I could just like mm. tangibly feel right. God's presence mm. through the created world that way, and I think that, well, that is something that always stick with me. Mm -hmm. mm. Are we talking pre-COVID or post-COVID? Right. Because right. I, I was thinking just mm. yesterday, um, what you said, Pastor Key, like what I'm noticing, our kids are so pent up and in the house and doing all their work or mm. doing a Zoom video. And then the minute you let them go outside and they take this deep breath of air, mm. like they feel free to be themselves again. Kid, and it, it's just this natural reaction. It's, it's mm -hmm. quite beautiful. And Andy did a time lapse of 
those flowers, those really beautiful oh, purple flowers yeah. that, that open and close uh-huh. at, when the sun goes down. Cool. And come cool. up. But I mean, I'm a Hawaii girl. And so I had the fortune of having the beach right there mm-hmm. and the mountains right there. Right. And um, I think really kind of taking that for granted, living in Hawaii and growing mm-hmm. up there. But those are places of solitude and solace for me oftentimes, whether I'm with people or not. I mean, you, you can find moments to just sit and admire the beauty. I mean, you sit on a beach and you pick up grains of sand and you have thousands of grains of sand right. in your hand and you look across the beach mm. and how mm. much that is. And that's, that's part of uh, Bible verses in Psalm talking about the, as many as the grains of sand, mm. sand and, and as many of the stars mm. in the sky, right? Like mm. that God created all these things and knows all of them by name in the same way God knows all of us. Mm. But, and to see, for me, what I've loved when I look at the ocean is everywhere I've lived in my life, I've always been able to see the Pacific Ocean, except when I was serving in Pasadena, <laughs> because it was kind of far. I mean, <laughs> mile-wise, not far, LA-wise, <laughs> traffic-wise, to get across. But now you can get across town in 30 minutes or less, right? <laughs> That's right. And, but to live, to have seen the Pacific Ocean has been... Um, a comfort to me because I always know home is across the way mm-hmm. and then and vice versa when I was in, when I'm in Hawaii mm. my other home is across the way mm. and and God created all of that and mm. that expanse of water and the lands that just pop up those are all miracles yeah. Yeah. in the same way that creation is a miracle I mean the fact that each of us are sitting here and on the billions of people in the world have lived on this earth that's God's creation and yeah. You can't explain that yeah, in yeah. any other way. No, that's true. If I may, I mean, I think one of the things that I, I'm hearing from all of us is that when we experience God's nature, we experience it like away from people. Mm-hmm. And I think that's somewhat troubling for me that I keep <laughs> explaining, like when I'm experiencing God's nature, I find it away from people, mm-hmm. but it's, it should be with people. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. you know, when we see our children, when we see people doing good, when we see our healthcare workers, I mean, when I see that, that's also part of God's nature that's beautiful. Exactly. You know, yeah, so. Or like when people go to camp, right? Mm. Mm-hmm. Everybody says that that's when they experience God, right. nature right. the most. And, and it's like, but you're not by yourself. You're doing it with other people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and it, that's, the people have brought you together yeah. to this place. Yeah. And that's God's people. Amen. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah, and I think kind of maybe the reason we feel that way too is just this unconscious idea that too many people is the problem and kind of hurting the earth Mm. um and so like to get away from people and to get right with god is to go in nature away from these people who are kind of harming it Mm. and i don't think that is the case at all i think it's just how how are we treating nature like in community and in um among the many people we have on the earth like we there is a different way to live it doesn't have to be this this feeling of getting away from people and going right. into solitude in nature because mm. those are two separate things they're not god mm. created both mm. and so finding a right way to live in community with creation is right. important yeah especially when we hear the words when two or three are gathered mm. the you know the body of christ is present and it was like how does that how does that apply to what we're saying right yeah sure. yeah wow thank you for all of that i know that mm-hmm. there's, there's a special place because when god created i've heard this said that when god created the world that that was the first temple that God mm-hmm. had created for God's presence to mm-hmm. be in, yeah. right? And then later down the line, we have other, other temples come up, but that as God walked through the garden, that we, we can experience that too today, mm-hmm. and that a piece of God is still in that creative, um, that creation space. But to kind of close this out, um, I think that there's always this point, like at the end of the sermon, there's always the call to action, mm. right? The, well, what do we do now that we've listened to this, right? And if I may to start out, like I just would actually just when preparing this, I just wanted people to just know that, um, that there is this space. And I think we could feel that more than ever now is that in nature, that there's this space that we're able to find God and to be um, blessed and to have grace fill us in those spaces. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it goes beyond that because we're, we're also called to preserve that and to be ambassadors of change in that. And so for our listening audience, uh, where, would you, where do you think that we as a church, um, either here at Faith or as a, a, a global church, where do we think or where do you think that we can continue or push or, or take action? Mm-hmm. 
I mean, I, I think this is something that, that uh, we discussed in our Logos group, in a Logos Bible study. We talked about it in Awaken as well. Uh, is for me, I start with Sabbath. I think mm. this is really about Sabbath. It's really about taking a break from all the consumption, overconsumption, mm. I should say, right? Taking a break from just doing more than what we need, taking more than what we need, and going back to, and every time I say the Ten Commandments, I know people, oh, here comes the Ten Commandments. It's, a, <laughs> it's such an old thing. It's a, key. <laughs> but, and, uh, but the reality is, I think about the Ten Commandments and how important that is. And I think if we actually lived out, if you really studied what the Ten Commandments were about, you know, and lived it out, not in a legalistic way, but in a covenantal way, in a relational way. You know, when you think about that, it's just, you know, it says don't murder, don't steal. Like, those are odd, like, no duh. But what does it really mean to put God first? You know, what does it really mean to say that, you know, man was made not, you know, was, Sabbath was made, made for man, not the other way around, you know? And, and it was just, you know, what, does those, you know what, are, what did each of those things mean? And when I, and when I was kind of sharing that with Logan, I go, this is it. If we're gonna, if we're gonna create, if we're gonna care for God's creation, this is it for me. Like this is one practical, effective way is to look at God's commands, His will, and His will is really to love each other, right? The way we love ourselves, love God with everything that we have, and it's just, yeah. And there's something about that first commandment. There's something about taking a break. There's something about fasting that really helps us to think a little bit more clear, right, about what we, what it is. So. Yeah, something about that Ten Commandments for me is, is, is something that I would start with. Yeah, yeah, and I think, too, kind of building off of that and that idea of Sabbath is just contentment mm -hmm. um, and being at peace with what we have yeah. and that the, the idea of enoughness and resting in God. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a huge thing that we have kind of gotten away from. Uh, and as Christians, we are supposed to be, you know, not of this world, but be mm -hmm. apart from it. Amen. And yet we participate in society and the consumerism the same as everyone else mm -hmm. and so if you look at the lives of someone who's christian versus not christian and you didn't know who was who could you tell by the amount that they consume by yeah. how much they're using how they're stewarding things mm -hmm. who is who mm -hmm. and i would say probably not and so i think that's a problem um and i think the, the other big thing we can do besides practicing that contentment and enoughness is just talking about what's going on yeah um with our climate with our earth um, cause I know growing up in church, I never once heard about it. And I felt mm. like, is this just not, is this something we're going to ignore? Is this something we don't believe? Like, I don't understand why we're right. not talking about this. So I think that just awareness, um, of the topic and bringing it up will foster personal change. Mm. And then from that personal change, you can take more steps, um, mm. from that. But I think, yeah, that that's a huge first thing to do. Mm. I mean, and then we talked, we started the conversation about oh, education and awareness, right? I mean, and, and I think... I mean, I was joking earlier with the guys that my kids just out of the blue decided to make up a song about Earth Day because <laughs> they know that uh, April 22nd is Earth Day. And if you all were able to, if we were not on lockdown and safe at home, you could go to Ben and Jerry's and get your free scoop of ice cream, mm -hmm. right? Because Ben and Jerry's always, they were the group that always let people know today's Earth Day. I mean, they, they, ben and Jerry's still around? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Just kidding. It's delicious ice yeah, cream. No. But, um. I think for those who are already environmental aware, environmentally aware, you know, you, you try to make things happen individually through mm -hmm. yourself, right? And, and then you try to grow up from there. But then it doesn't necessarily mean that they're the only ones doing it. I think mm -hmm. like Will said, you can't tell who's Christian and who's, who's, doing, who's recycling and who's not recycling. Mm -hmm. But I think that awareness that it's there, if you instill it in your children, but you also add that element of faith to it. Mm -hmm. You can see changes happen. You can see kids living differently and young adults grow into a, a different kind of yeah. people. Mm -hmm. And I think at our churches, we, we some try and some don't even aren't aware of it at all. I mean, we put a basket out and people put their bulletins in there if they want it recycled. Mm -hmm. But if that's all we're doing, that's to me, that's not enough. Mm -hmm. And that's why I feel like my job or part of this uh, role and responsibility in, in helping to lead a church is to empower people like Will to say, look, if you want to be the center of South Bay that doesn't have any environmental awareness groups or climate change groups, let us help you and support you and, mm -hmm. and, and those who are interested do that. And, and it doesn't have to be just our church members. Mm -hmm. 
be our community. Mm -hmm. It could be the South Bay. Mm -hmm. And so we're like, we'll run with this. You have a home, you, you have the support, let's do this. Yeah. And, I, and I think it's, it's been really helpful that Minister Eric has fostered that relationship with Will so that we are continuing to do this. And then we're sitting at this table mm -hmm bringing people good news and a message that there is hope. Yeah. Because if you look outside your doors today, right? The sky is bluer. Mm -hmm. And the birds are singing louder because we might not have noticed them chirping before. Mm -hmm. We notice that grass is greener, trees are growing, the rain has been falling. Mm -hmm. I mean, California's like out of a, officially out of drought, mm -hmm. you know? And for the first time in almost a decade, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's about us being aware and recognizing that God's creation has been always around us all the time mm -hmm. and we just need to take better care of it. But I, I do have to say, I mean, in some ways too, it's, you know, some of us are called to do like a huge amount of impact. Mm -hmm. But what I've noticed throughout this whole coronavirus, you know, uh, stay at home and, and, and this pandemic is that it takes it usually takes a lot a lot longer to do something healthy to become healthy mm -hmm. and it doesn't take much time to get unhealthy right Correct. i mean we talk about workouts and everything but what i learned about this is that in five weeks amazing how our world improved just because less people are driving so in some ways it's some people are called to do huge things but I think we're all called to do just those little things. And if we all jump on board, it's amazing. Like you said, mm -hmm. so many people, if they do harmful things, it's going to affect our earth in a harmful way. But even if they just take one little step and we mm -hmm. all do it together, it's been amazing. You know, it's been amazing. And so there's something about that that I, I don't want to take away from our, mm -hmm. our discussion mm -hmm. either. Right. Well, and, and, and my prayer would be that we don't want it to revert yes. back mm -hmm. to yes. that after this. Yeah. Yeah, and I think too, people tend to think their individual actions uh, don't matter. But as we've seen yes. collectively, when <laughs> everyone's individual <laughs> action is put together, yeah. staying home, it does make a huge amount of difference. Yeah, I mean, our pollution has been here for decades and decades and decades. And, and here we are in five weeks. And it's, I mean, in one report, 29% of our environment has improved. 29, like, you know, just, just pollution has improved 29% in five weeks. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, so... If you've taken anything from this mm -hmm. awareness that we're all part of, we have to all be on board and do this together. That's right. um, and so I think for our challenge, or I guess maybe my challenge in light of all of this is that we continue to go down this path. We continue to work together. We continue to be more aware of just our impact upon our environment. And if we can make a difference in the South Bay, like all the better for us. Yeah. And so that is my prayer for us. That is my prayer for this community here at Faith. And that is my prayer for this world. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Well, with all that was said and all that was discussed, um, let us uh, join our hearts and minds together in prayer. But if you're joining us on, on our live, live stream, please keep sending in prayer requests uh, to the church. We're still fielding them. We're still reading through them. Um, and so we, we would like to continue to lift up our community in prayer. But at this time, let us, let us pray. A gracious and loving God, we thank you that through your creation, Lord, that you speak to us, God. We thank you that you've provided us with so many ways of experiencing your love, so many ways of experiencing your blessing, and so many ways of just knowing that you are a God that cares for us, Lord. But at this time, as we are in the midst of this pandemic, God, in these uncertain times, Lord, we continue to pray for all of those that are on the front lines of this, uh, those that are in the healthcare field, those that are responding to this crisis and are, in many ways, our heroes at this time, God. We pray for them. We pray for the doctors and the nurses and all those that work in the hospitals, those that are um, sacrificing so much for us, God. We also pray for our, our families and our communities, Lord, those who are affected by this in adverse ways. We pray for patience, especially for all those that parents who are now teachers, God. We pray for um, love as we continue to uh, shelter in place, God. 
We also pray for this community of faith as we continue to navigate these times, Lord, that you are continually going before us, God. Thank you for the the abundance of wisdom that you've already given us, God. But we pray that you continue to lead us, Lord. And at this time, as we um, allow your word to soak in, into our hearts, God, we lift up the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. To, to continue to give your offerings and pledges, you can send them into the church. You can also um, make a donation online through Venmo or PayPal or also Vanco. But we know that times are hard. And so we are grateful that for those who are able to send in their gifts to continue to support the missions and ministries of faith. And so as we do so, we'd like to pray over and, and pray for God's gifts to be blessed and the, a prayer of dedication with all of you. So let us pray. Living Christ, bless the gifts that we bring with the power of resurrection and with hope. Use them for your earthly kingdom. Let them be an offering of healing for us, our church, and our world. Amen. Amen. And we also, before we end and close our Earth Sunday worship service, we also want to share a few announcements before you are charged with a benediction from Minister Eric. But we also want to, you to know that we are continuing to do our Bible studies. So we have one almost every single day of the week. We have one on Sunday afternoons at 12.30. On Monday evenings, we have Hebrews at 7 p.m. On Tuesdays, we have our 10.30 a.m. Zoom Bible study on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. On Thursday evenings, Eric, 7.30 or 7? 7? 7.30. So we have one every day of the week. We also have prayer rooms open at 12 p.m., 12 noon, and 7 p.m. every day, Monday through Friday, um, where our pastors and our staff are on call for you to just check in, to share your prayers with us, to share how your soul is doing, but also a time to connect. And so we invite you to join in any of our prayer rooms. You can find the Zoom number on our website, faithsouthbay.org. But before we go, I have one more announcement. Next week, Sunday, we want all of you to join us because it's going to be a special Sunday. And so here we go as we get ready to tell you about it. Wait, that's no earth. And it's no moon either. 
It's a Death Star. Next week, we're going to celebrate May the 4th, Be With You Sunday. It is May 3rd, but we're going to get you ready, and we'll have a pop-up movie day on May the 4th. So be ready and get ready to hear all those details and instructions this week. But as we go forth, I'm going to invite Minister Eric to come up and give our benediction, and we thank you for worshiping with us in today's service. Here are these words of benediction. Creator God, send us forth from this place with the love of Christ as we go forth into this world and wash your hands. Please pass the pieces with each other at home.